Now that we have learned how to complete the square, we are now going to learn how to solve quadratics by completing the square. Over here on the right hand side of your page, you'll see the nine steps that we are going to follow to do this. So let's start by looking at example one. On example one, we have x squared plus 24x plus 100 is equal to 56. Your first step when, I, um, when completing the square is to have your variables on one side and your numbers on the other. So I need to start by moving 100 to the other side. It's positive, so to undo addition, I'm going to have to do subtraction. So I'm going to bring down x squared plus 24x. 100 minus 100 is 0. I'm going to bring down my equal sign. And 56 minus 100 is negative 44. So that's step one. When we complete step one, we'll have our variables on one side. So our x is on one side. And we'll have our number on the other side. Step two is to set up our blanks. So I'm going to do plus blank plus blank. These blanks are for that missing number that's going to complete our square. Now we are ready to complete the square. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my area model. And I want this shape to be a square and not a rectangle. So we're going to put our first term in our first box. And to make this be a square, I am going to go ahead and divide my B term by 2. 24x divided by 2 is 12x. Now I am on to step 5, and I'm going to find the greatest common factor of each row and of each column. The greatest common factor of my top row is x. The greatest common factor of my left column is x. x times what number would give me a 12x here? 12. x times what number would give me a 12x here? 12. So now we are finally ready to complete the square, and I can do that by multiplying 12 by 12. 12 times 12 is 144. So 144 is that missing number that completes the square. That is the number that I am going to add to both sides of my equation in the blanks. So that was step seven. Step eight is to rewrite the trinomial as a perfect square binomial. So what we're saying is that we have just factored x squared plus 24x plus 144. When we factored it, we got x plus 12 times x plus 12, which is the same thing as saying x plus 12 squared. So that's this side of the equation right here. On the right side of our equation, negative 44 plus 144 is 100. Now we are on step nine, which is to solve for x. So from here, I can undo the square by taking the square root of both sides. The square root undoes the square and that leaves me with x plus 12. Whenever we take the square root of a number, it's always plus or minus. The square root of 100 is 10. From here, I have two equations that I can solve. x plus 12 equals positive 10, and x plus 12 equals negative 10. So I have one equation for the plus sign, and I have another equation for the minus sign. So the only thing that changed is that this is a positive 10 and this is a negative 10. This side of the equation did not change. So now I can solve this. To undo addition, I'm going to do subtraction and get x equals negative 2. To undo addition, I'll do subtraction and get x equals negative 22. So these are my two solutions. I know that's a lot the first time you see it, so let's go ahead and try another example. So on example two, 
the first thing I need to do is get my variables on one side and my constant on the other. So I'm going to add 10x to both sides. And so I'll have x squared plus 10x minus 96 <coughs> excuse me, equals 0. Well, I have my variables on one side, but I still need to move this 96 to the other side. So then I'll go ahead and add 96 to both sides. So I'll have x squared plus 10x equals 96. Now I am ready to set up my blanks. Once we do that, we can go ahead and begin the process of completing the square. So to complete the square, I'm going to draw my area model. And my first term goes in my first box. I want this shape to be a square and not a rectangle. To make this a square, I need to divide my middle term by 2. 10x divided by 2 is 5x. Now from here, I can go ahead and find the greatest common factor of each row and of each column. The greatest common factor of my top row is x. The greatest common factor of my left column is x. x times what number would give me a 5x here? 5. x times what number would give me a 5x here? 5. Now we can find that missing number that will complete this square. So we're completing the square. And so that missing number will be 5 times 5, which is 25. So 25 is that missing number that I'm going to add to both sides of my equation. We have just factored x squared plus 10x plus 25. When we factored it, we got x plus 5 times x plus 5. So that's the same thing as saying x plus 5 squared. And then on my right side of my equation, in my calculator, I'm going to do 95 plus, or not 95, 96 plus 25. And when I do that, I get 121. Now I have an easy equation that I can solve. To solve this equation, I can undo the square by taking the square root. The square root undoes the square, and that leaves me with x plus 5. Whenever we take the square root of a number, it's always plus or minus. The square root of 121 is 11. So from here, I have two equations I can solve. x plus 5 equals positive 11, and x plus 5 equals negative 11. Again, we get one equation for the plus sign, and we get another equation for the minus sign. So one for positive 11 and one for negative 11. To solve for x, I can subtract 5 on both sides and get x equals 6. For the other equation, I can subtract 5 on both sides and get x equals negative 16. These are my two solutions. Let's go ahead and look at one more example together. So let's look at example 3. The first thing that I want to do is I want to get my variables on one side and my constant on the other. So I'm going to add 4x squared to both sides. <coughs> Excuse me. So that I have uh, my x's on the left side. And then at the same time, this 58 is positive, And I know I'm going to need to move that. So I'm going to go ahead and move that one at the same time. Negative 3x squared plus 4x squared is 1x squared. I'll bring down my 18x. 58 minus 58 is 0. I'll bring down my equal sign. Negative 4x squared minus 4x squared is 0. And negative 2 minus 58 is negative 60. So now I'm ready to set up my blanks. So plus blank plus blank. Now we can go ahead and do the process of completing the square. So I'm going to go ahead and draw the square. First term goes in the first box. I want this shape to be a square and not a rectangle. And so in order for that to happen, I have to divide 18x by 2. 
So I'm going to get 9x. The greatest common factor in my top row is x. The greatest common factor in my left column is x. x times 9 would give me a 9x here. And x times 9 would give me a 9x here. So now I can find that missing number that completes this square. 9 times 9 is 81. So 81 is that missing number that completes the square. We have just factored x squared plus 8x or plus 18x plus 81. When we factored it, we got x plus 9 times x plus 9, which is the same thing as saying x plus 9 squared. On the right side, negative 60 plus 81 is 21. So now I can go ahead and solve by taking square roots. So to undo the square, I'm going to take the square root of both sides and get x plus 9 equals plus or minus. Well, 21 is not a perfect square. Because it's not a perfect square, I'm going to have to do the birthday cake method. The smallest prime number that goes into 21 is 3. It goes in 7 times. The smallest prime number that goes into 7 is 7. It goes in once. Do I have any pairs? No. So the square root of 21 stays that way. So from here I have two equations that I can solve. x plus 9 equals the positive square root of 21 and x plus 9 equals the negative square root of 21. Again, the only thing changing here is that I have one equation for my plus sign and I have one equation for my minus sign. I still need to get x alone. To undo addition, I'm going to do subtraction. And I'll have x equals. Well, we know that the square root of 21 and negative 9 are not like terms. So I am just going to go ahead and write them side by side. Same thing over here. To undo addition, I'll do subtraction. The negative square root of 21 and negative 9 are not like terms. So I'm going to write those side by side. We always write the number first and the radical second. That's just as mathematicians how we do that. So we have two solutions here. Negative 9 plus the square root of 21 and negative 9 minus the square root of 21. You could also write your answer as negative 9 plus or minus the square root of 21. And because that means that you have two solutions. One for the plus sign and one for the minus sign.